Hi, I'm Chris with Rago Rents, and today we're going to be talking about heat stress monitoring equipment, such as the Quest Amp 36. When you first get your Quest Amp, you want to power it on and check for the battery level. It needs to be at least 6.5 volts for it to be comfortable with running, and then you want to go and check your setup. In the setup tab, you want to make sure that it is reading either Fahrenheit or Celsius, depending on what you want and you can also change the language. There's a variety of options, um, however, we're just going to be sticking with English. Here, you can change the time and the date, which happen to both be accurate already. Alright, your two options are heat index and humidex, um, both of which are explaining how the temperature feels. They're just calculated differently. And then, you can change whether the flow is on or flow is off, depending on whether or not you have an airflow attachment. Now that we have this instrument set up like we need it to be, you simply hit the run stop button to go back to the main menu, and then just for good measure we will reset the instrument. Here you just hit enter when it's hovering over reset, and then you hold down the enter key for it to reset the instrument. That brings you back to the main menu and you can arrow up to the view option and hit enter to start seeing your readings. I set this in Celsius in order for us to quickly test to see if the instrument is in within calibration. In order to do that we simply undo these screws at the top and we pop off this top sensor bar. Here that leaves an input for our verification module. Plugging that in will change the readings, and as you can see here, there are values printed for what will be displayed. If those readings are reflected within the, the actual measurements and are within half a degree Celsius, then you know it's within calibration. As you can see, this machine is. Now that we know this Quest Temp is within calibration, I'm going to show you how to run a heat stress test. First thing you want to do is check whether the wet bulb wick is clean and whether the reservoir is filled with water. If it isn't, you want to fill it with deionized or distilled water in order to keep the wick clean longer. Um, you want to keep the Quest Temp in a safe area roughly three and a half feet off the ground. When you do that, you simply want to enter the view mode and hit the run button. You want to do this approximately 10 minutes after turning the machine on because it does take the sensors a while to acclimate. Now that it is running and storing data, you can leave it in the desired location for the duration of your test. When you're satisfied with the duration, you simply just hit the run stop button and it'll stop the test. When you're running a test, there will be a variety of temperatures that are being displayed. The wet bulb is shown as wet and that factors in humidity and airflow. Dry bulb, also just dry, will show what the air temperature is. Globe temperature factors in radiant heat such as sunlight. Here, the wet globe or wet bulb globe temperature is shown for both indoor and outdoor, and these are calculated based on the measurements of the three sensors, as well as relative humidity and heat index being displayed. In this video, we used the Quest Temp 36. We also offer the Quest Temp 32, the Quest Temp 34, and the Quest Temp 46. The big difference between these four is the Quest M46 is not intrinsically safe. There are also additional differences such as an air velocity probe only working with the Quest M36 and 46. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions on the Quest M36 or any of our heat stress monitors, feel free to give us a call and we'd be happy to help you.